up YouTube <laughs> Welcome to my YouTube channel In this tutorial I'm going to be talking about Git What is Git? Git's a tool that you use when you want to get shit done And with Midnight Sun um, Oh my god I'm so funny uh, So there's Let me just uh, What the hell is this? I don't want this view Let's just get rid of that Hide object list Ooh, shortcut command shift L. Ooh, ooh, this is cool. All right, so I'm gonna talk about Git agenda. Why? Why do we need Git? <laughs> <laughs> and then what is Git? And then you know, like that scene, and it's like, who is Gomorrah? <laughs> Where is Gomorrah? <laughs> Why is Gomorrah? This is basically that. And then um, VCS models. This is simply just nerdy stuff. You don't even need to know that, but I thought I'd put it there. And then interactive tutorial. And then we're going to play around with Git. So over here, it's going to be the same shit show as before. I'm going to just uh, switch to the command line. Uh, things are going to go bad. And, uh, you know, some of you guys are going to try and follow. And we're going to be out of sync. It's going to be a terrible tutorial. And then uh, we're, <laughs> we're going to go over a usual workflow. And we're going to go over merge conflicts. This is some shit that happens often. And you guys are going to hate it. So I'm going to explain it so you don't hate it as much. And there's resources. If you guys are fucking nerds and you need to know more about these stuff. Ah, uh, fuck, I got that on recording. <laughs> so, why? Uh, we collaborate here. So, um, <laughs> we have one giant repository. We push all of our code to it. Uh, that's pretty much how it works everywhere. Um, Facebook, Google, Apple, like wherever you guys go and work. Uh, everyone's going to... Like every team that you get put on, there's like a shit ton of people on that team uh, contributing to the same project. So you need to be able to have some means of doing that because you can't just edit your code and then put your code on a USB stick and send it to your friend and then your friend changes it and then, you know, they zip it up and then they email it to another friend and then some bug happens and you're like, oh, which version of this project this bug happened to? And then you're like, oh, fuck, we don't have version control. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. I, I joke about this, but this literally was my team at Apple. Like my, I was, like, <laughs> I was, like, <laughs> I was on two teams. Apple <laughs> yeah, no, wait. Okay, I was on two teams at Apple. The first team was a hardware team where people didn't know fuck all about software, and that's basically what happened. And it was terrible, which is why I tried to get out of that team as fast as possible. Which is why I switched to the second team, which was the polar opposite. Everyone knew their shit like so much. It was amazing. But that happens. And if, you know, like at your interviews, you know, sometimes you can interview your interviewer. <laughs> be like, <laughs> be like <laughs> this isn't about me. It's about whether you guys are good enough. For <laughs> you can basically ask them if they're using Git. And if they say no, run. Just fucking run. Because Git literally simplifies your life so much you'll want to use Git. If anyone doesn't use Git, it literally means they have less IQ. <laughs> it literally means that new study shows. <laughs> yeah, I'm not making shitty jokes. Uh, we collaborate, so we need Git. Um, so we need all of your code to be accessible because um, you don't want to like send emails with zipped up from <laughs> C files. Um, and then you want to be able to track your code. So like you know, if something goes wrong, we need to be able to go back in history and see where that change got introduced. And Git is amazing in all of that stuff. So what is Git? <laughs> Why is Git? It's a version control system. So basically, version control system is the type of application that lets you do all that kinds of stuff. So you basically um, can go over multiple versions of your project. Don't take notes. What are you doing? <laughs> You're going to have this entire video. I'm joking. If you want to take notes, take notes. Um, I'm a fun lead, so I joke with you guys. <laughs> and then it lets us work on things together. So you can basically. Um, work on your project and then you can push your code onto github so there's one place where we keep all of our code um, and then other people will push their code and that's how everyone has access to everyone's files which is good it keeps track of things um, so if something goes wrong you can always go back in history it has concepts of branch uh, concepts like branches so you can for example um, create a new branch and that gives you a free like a, that gives you a working uh, space where you can make whatever changes you want, you can run whatever experiments that you want, and break things and experiment. You know that's what development is about. You just want to constantly break things and learn how they how they broke, and <laughs> and uh, that's how you learn. 
fact, actually. Like if every single command that you ran like executed perfectly, that would have been an ideal world, but that never happens. Um, and then we love Git, and you guys will soon realize why Git is amazing. It's really cool. So there's different models for the uh, version controls. There's a centralized model and there's this decentralized model. And this is basically, you don't really need to like think about this that much. But the reason I'm saying it is because historically all of the uh, version control systems had this decentral had the centralized model. And then Git was decentralized. And I'm gonna show it here. So in the centralized model, there's a remote repo. And then uh, I actually use um, other people that set attending um, to the meetings names in my example because I'm a really friendly lead. Um, but basically, there's a remote repo, and these are our individual com uh, computers. So, Art, you're here. Uh, Janavi. She's been, she's been Janavi. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus. I, I I checked on the Google Sheets to sh make sure that she was coming today. Maybe I made a mistake, or she filled out the wrong form. Yeah, it's like um, there's another design team. Oh my she gosh, she's doing two design teams? I'm <laughs> yeah. struggling with one, Jesus Christ. No, that's actually encouraged. Like, go to other design teams, learn stuff, bring it here. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the centralized model. Um, pretty much there's like one place where you push and pull code. So these errors are bi-directional, which means that you can push code and you can pull code. And then there's decentralized model, which is a shit show. Every computer is a <laughs> complete um, repository, and you can push pull code to like everything. Everything is connected to everything. You can do anything within anything, and it's a shit show. Which is why <laughs> we use the centralized model <laughs> within our like we use Git. So Git is <laughs> decentralized, but we still use it in a centralized fashion. So um, I don't know why I actually explained why Git is decentralized. You guys could have just like not known that and be totally fine. But I did that. Oh, I, I think when, when you uh, come to pushing your code, there's like that actually helps with you with envisioning um, how um, repositories work. So we'll get to that. But um, we use Git like that. So there, we have the remote repo on GitHub, and then we push and pull code to it. So it could be decentralized, but we use it as a centralized. And then, okay, sick, let's make a repository. Um, oh my god, people are opening their laptops and shit, fuck. <laughs> We're gonna be out of sync, I'm gonna be too fast, and you guys aren't gonna just, okay, whatever. Fuck, we'll just have to deal with it. Um, let's go to temp. You guys remember this directory from the past tutorial, and to all of you YouTube channel watchers, <laughs> be sure to check out my bash tutorial. <laughs> So let's uh, clear this up. Let's remove hello. Okay. So this is the empty directory. Uh, I'm just gonna make this directory a Git repository. How do I do that? Um, very easy. Um, git init. Boom. And that basically says initialize empty Git repository add here, right? And then you can see that it put like the full path to this temp folder, and then there's like dot Git file. What is this? Dot Git file. If I do ls, I can't see it. Where the fuck is dot get file and you basically do dash la boom <laughs> that dot get file is here and you can actually go into it cd dot get oh woo all these files i don't care and don't know about let's go back because you don't need to know about those files but just know that it exists so if git is black magic to you um it's actually you know using those files to keep history of your files right because when, uh, as we're gonna shortly see, whenever you're working in Git, you actually don't see anything about the version control system. You can actually do like Git check, you can check out a different branch and then Git will go and replaces your files to like the files in that branch and you won't see where those files exactly are until you check out those files. So um, you're gonna see how that happens. And that's super, super powerful. It's like, I'm, like I'm joking, but like here's, the rare moment that I get serious, it's really powerful. So like, pay attention, it's really cool. So let's make a repository. So we made that repository, so you can see like that repository is here. So um, let's add a file. So let's say this is your project and you wanna add files to it. So for example, um, like the hello world application or whatever. So here, just to like keep track of files conceptually, I'm just gonna name the files the number of in which they were introduced. So I'm gonna do, for example, touch file one, right? I can see file one here, and then um, add. Okay, we added that file, so we can basically 
Um, so git basically sees that this file got added. How does git know? You can basically ask it. So you can do git status. And it says it's on branch master. We're going to talk about branches later. But git by default comes with a branch called master. And that's the default branch that it comes with. It says no commits yet because you haven't made any commits to this repository. So it's at an empty history because you, know, you haven't added any files. And it says untracked files. So git sees that this file has changed, but it, it's not tracking it yet. So if you change this file and like do other stuff, uh, Git will know not will not know about the history of this file. It's only until when you add this file to your Git repository where Git starts tracking it, and you can there you, you will get a history from like when this file got made, who changed it, who changed what line. You can get like really good granularity. You can see exactly what change got exposed by what developer at what time point in time. So it's really cool. So we want Git to. Um, track this file, so it already is giving us a little bit of uh, instruction. So we can do add git add file one, right? Let's do git status again. So you can see that this file is now, uh, it's turned to green. So I think on most of your uh, computers it actually shows it at green. Uh, so it means that this is a change um, that git noticed. This file just got added, so it says new file. So if you change a file, it'll say, it'll say change file. Um, but because we don't have any files right now, it doesn't show it. Um, so these are the so this file has been added to Git, but it has not been committed yet. So it's not part of the history yet. Um, Git simply you can basically stage some files. So this is a staged file, and um, it this term staged is going to make more sense shortly when we have like more files. But right now this file is staged. And then we want to make it part of our history. So we want to take a snapshot of this project at this point. It's very simple. It only has one file. But we want to take a snapshot and then um, save it so that Git knows about it. And then later on, if we fuck up, we can like come back and take a look at it. So git commit. This command commits all the files that are staged. So all the files that are green right now. So let, let me actually uh, make a whole bunch of other files. Touch file 2. Touch. File three. So right now you can see file one, file two, file three are in this directory. I can do git status, and you can see that this change this change was made since the last commit, which was no commit. Um, there there was a new file created, and then these files are untracked. Let's say we we don't track them for now, so we don't add them yet now, but we want to commit this file. So all the stuff that are green are going to be committed. So we you do git commit dash m, and then with every single commit you are um, taking a snapshot of your repository. So every commit will have information about the changes that you made to a specific file. So every time that you want to basically save that version of your project, which is by committing you, you are doing that, you want to include a meaningful message um, that shows what those changes are. And this is going to be super, super useful once you um, go back into your project's history and want to see what changed and how it changed. So usually keep your commit messages short but descriptive. Um, it shouldn't exceed like one sentence usually. So keep it like the goal is to basically commit often so that your changes are not big. Oh, display got uh, messed up. Let's see. Oh my god, please show stuff. If I disconnect, I think the video will disconnect too, like the video recording. Uh, okay, let's disconnect.